And we interrupt uh, Joe Pike to go to uh, Euston, where uh, Mick Lynch, uh, head of the RMT, is about to speak. Can you turn around just a tape? Yeah. So um, the RMT union today has decided to put a new offer from Network Rail to members in an electronic referendum with a recommendation to reject the proposals from Network Rail. And that referendum will close on Monday, December the 12th at noon. 12 o'clock. All the strike action that we've got planned in December, that's 13, 14, uh, and so on, will go ahead um, as planned, uh, as will the action in January. Um, but in addition to that, further, we've also put further strike action that will take place, and all, all members will be instructed not to book on from 1800 hours on December the 24th until 6 o'clock in the morning on December the 27th. This new phase of strike action coincides with the wind down of the passenger service on the National Rail Network and coincides with the commencement of the engineering work scheduled for that period. The overtime ban that had previously been scheduled has been cancelled on Network Rail because of this new strike action. In regard to the train operating companies, there's been no improved offer from the rail delivery group. And the reason for that is because they have had no mandate from the government. The government has not allowed any new offer to be put to us today. And there is a meeting scheduled for tomorrow, uh, planned in, and we'll see if the rail delivery group, on behalf of the train operating companies, the passenger service, uh, has got uh, a mandate to make us an offer. So at the minute, we haven't got anything that's acceptable to us uh, and we feel that we've been compelled to take this action because of the intransigence of the government delivered to us by the employers uh, on the government's behalf and that we've got no choice because what we've been faced with is an extremely detrimental offer. It's very poor in relation to the pay elements and our members simply aren't in the position of the feedback that we've had to accept the changes that the companies have put on the table. So the action will go ahead. There will be more action uh, during the close down period on the railway over Christmas. And all the other scheduled action in the new year is going ahead. So that's an unfortunate position. Uh, we remain open for discussion with the companies. They know what needs to be done to get this dispute progressed and get a settlement going forward. But at the moment, we've not got a means to a solution. So our members will have a say in Network Rail and they will all get a vote uh, individually. They'll get all of the details of the documentation and the changes that the company wants to make as well as the pay proposals they've put up and they will decide whether they want to settle it or not and we'll know that on Monday the 12th of December. So that's where we are. Mick, if you're going to the members, why are you going to them if your recommendation is to reject it? Because there is a current of people that say that we should have a vote, uh, we should see you know, what, what the members feel about the proposals. People have said to us many times that you haven't put this to members. So there is an improvement in the offer, it has changed from where it was. But the detrimental parts, the changes to our members' uh, working lives and their terms and conditions, their work-life balance, the safety regime that the company wants to make, the, the cut of inspections by 50%, all of that remains in place. So we're putting that to our members so that they can have a, their say, but the view of their trade union is that these measures are not acceptable. And they don't address the issues in the dispute. There isn't a sufficient pay offer, and there isn't uh, a non-imposition of changes. If we were to accept these changes as they're written now, we would be forcing them through on top of our members' uh, wish to, to reject them. So we'll find out how strongly the members feel about that. If they want to accept it, we will abide by that. If they don't want to accept it, we all take the dispute forward. Does that reflect that you feel under pressure from some of your members? They've given up four days of pay over the Christmas period. They've clearly shown a great deal of unity thus far, but do you feel a pressure no, to go feeling, to them? We're not feeling pressure from that. There was a strong feeling that we should just reject it outright. But we've got a period of time now before the strike action is scheduled to start, another week or a bit. So we've got time to put a referend referendum in there, so that's what we'll do. Just and to be clear, will those strikes that are going ahead still involve the Network Rail members as well as the train company staff? All of the strike action remains in place, but with Network Rail there's additional strike action during the Christmas close-down, which is 
uh, during the engineering work period that we've got scheduled. And with the offer made yesterday by the Rail Delivery Group, what is it about that that you reject? Is it the pay offer or is it any specific changes they're proposing alongside that? Yes, it's all of that. But, but are it's, there any uh, particular stigma? Is yes, there are particular things. Set? So they know exactly, and we've told them across the table, it doesn't match the network rail offer, even if we think that the network rail offer is inferior. So they're playing some kind of game with this staging that we're seeing, which I don't think is appropriate in this dispute. So it's far inferior. It's an offer that we rejected in July, as many of you will know, uh, when it was put to network rail, 4% each year. Inflation at this time is 14.6, the retail price index. And it's, it lasts over three years. Most of our members have not had a pay deal last year or the year before. So over a four-year period, it's only 8%. And plus, they want to close every booking office in Britain. They want us to agree that there will be no guards on trains going forward. And there are a whole host of other measures in detail that we can't, we can't go with at this time. What do, you, what do you think the travelling public would vote if you offered them the chance, given the Christmas disruption? You've, you've had a reasonably fair win from quite a lot of people thus far, but it's Christmas next weekend particularly. That's a huge moment yeah, for the economy and for people's personal I'm lives. I'm sure that the travelling public will be really disappointed and irritated and angry. What, they, what I would ask them to remember, and all those businesses that have been in touch with us, the train operating companies will be indemnified for all of their losses. So my members will lose money, a lot of money, as you've set out. The public will lose the convenience of having a train service. The businesses around here and all around London and all over the country will lose money, undoubtedly. The only people that won't lose money are the train operating companies because the DFT and the Treasury will indemnify them against their losses. This is the most peculiar and perverse industrial dispute you will ever come across because the people that I'm negotiating with don't suffer any detriment whatsoever. Their lifestyles and their lavish salaries continue in the millions and the train operating companies that they represent don't have any loss of revenue or any loss of profit. And in fact, they made profits all through the pandemic and all through our strikes, they've made money. And this government is corrupting business in this country. It's punishing brewers, restaurateurs, entertainment industry in return for their ideological dispute, uh, uh, pursuit of a dispute with the railways and the trade unions, and to set down a marker against other public sector workers, that they've got to be impoverished for the state of the economy that this government drove us into. And we've got a new, relatively new transport secretary uh, said to be making a more positive contribution. Have you seen any evidence of that practically in terms think, of this dispute? I don't think the transport secretary is making these decisions. I've got to be very frank about that. These decisions are being made for a combination of the Treasury, and I still believe that Grant Shapps is sticking his oar into this dispute, because they knew that if they put driver-only operation back into this debate, it would never fly as a, as a set of proposals. And I think that has come directly from Grant Shapps himself. We've got a planned meeting tomorrow, what time is that? We've got a planned meeting, meeting tomorrow, uh, hopefully in the morning, we've got to get that confirmed uh, with the rail delivery group representatives. But that is predicated on the idea that the government gives those people a mandate in which to negotiate the framework. And at the moment they told me no such mandate has been delivered. Uh, and they knew when they put the proposals to us on Sunday, in a special session, that the, everything that they were putting to us was unacceptable. So the people that are delivering the message know it's unacceptable. It's the people behind them, in the government, in the DFT and the Treasury, that are dictating the way this dispute goes. And the people that are being held to ransom are the travelling public and the, and the businesses that will miss out during this period. But we cannot hold, because what Network Rail has told us is that they will commence the changes on December the 15th. So in little over a week's time, they will commence the changes, including the job losses, the restructuring of all of our members' working lives. Whether we accept it or not, they will carry on and we will have to put up with it. So imposition is on top of us. That's why we have to escalate the action and try to get a resolution to this dispute.